Hey guys, welcome back to another Kubernetes video. Today I will be continuing the scheduling series and in particular we'll be looking at taints and tolerations. So in our last video we looked at node affinity and node affinity attracts pods to a node. The opposite concept of this is the taint. A taint repels a pod from a node. We can then use tolerations to allow particular pods to be scheduled. So if our taint repels all pods, we can then select particular pods and apply a toleration to that pod. And then that pod can be scheduled on our node that has the taint. So as I mentioned, taints are applied to nodes and tolerations are applied to pods. Now, there are a number of different effects that a taint can have. The first one is no schedule. This means that uh, a node that is tainted with a no schedule taint uh, will not allow a pod to be scheduled on that node. The prefer no schedule means that we try to avoid uh, deploying the pod to that node, but if there are no other options, then we'll still deploy uh, the pod to the particular node. And the final one is no execute. So with no execute, we do avoid uh, deploying pods to that particular node, similar to no schedule. But on top of that, we evict pods that are that don't meet the requirements of that taint if they are executing on uh, the node already. If we wanted to take an example for no execute, we may have a, deployed a pod earlier on, pods running, and then we decide we want to taint the node with a no execute taint. That will evict the pod. Whereas if we did the same with no schedule, it would not evict the pod. If we want to uh, apply a taint using kubectl, we can run kubectl taint node, the node name, and then a key, a value, and the actual effect that we want to apply. And what you see over to the right here is how this would look in terms of YAML. Again, we have our effect, we have our key, and we have our value. And this taints field is just under the spec field for the node that we are defining. Next is uh, tolerations. So the toleration, as we have mentioned, allows a pod to be scheduled despite a taint. There are a couple of toleration operators. The first one is equals and the next one is exists. So for the equals operator, it means that the value defined in the toleration has to match the value defined in the taint. For the exists operator, we only have to match the key in the toleration with the key in the taint. And for all of these, the taint will only, uh, or, sorry, the toleration will only apply if the effect matches in both the taint and the toleration. Now, let's have a look at a couple of use cases where we might want to apply taints and tolerations. One example is for dedicated nodes. So if we have a particular application that we want to deploy to, uh, we want to have only that application on a particular node, then we may use taints and tolerations. We'll just uh, taint the node and then apply a toleration to uh, allow that taint on all of the pods for that specific application. The same might uh, apply for a customer where the, the cost of all of the customer's uh, pods will have a toleration that will allow them to deploy to a particular uh, node so that they are isolated on that hardware and there are no other customers within that particular host. Um, another example is specialized hardware. So we may have a, a subset of our nodes in our cluster uh, containing certain uh, specialized hardware like SSDs or particularly performant GPUs or CPUs or anything like that. And we want to um, be careful and select the uh, workloads that we deploy that specialized hardware. So if we had something that had, had high requirements for uh, disk speed, then we would deploy to our nodes with uh, SSDs. And we can, we can easily do that, again, using taints and tolerations. You can imagine 
we have uh, attained for uh, applied to one of these specialized hosts, then we just apply uh, a toleration to the pods that require uh, the specialized host, and then they can be deployed onto the node. And finally, uh, evictions. So if we want to uh, remove a set of pods from a node, we could apply a no execute taint to that node, and the pods will be removed from that particular node. Now, uh, some taints are actually generated by the uh, Kubernetes node controller themselves, and these taints are based on node conditions. So if we look at a node definition using kubectl uh, get node o yaml, then we will see a, a set of conditions under the node. And some of these conditions may look like memory pressure, disk pressure, uh, process ID pressure, unschedulable, and network unavailable. These are a number of examples. And what the node controller does is it takes these signals and it applies taints based on the signals. So you can imagine if uh, a node doesn't have an available network, we certainly don't want to deploy any pods to it. So a taint will then be applied to the node and that will repel pods from being deployed on the particular node. So that is everything for this uh, quick video. I hope that was informative. If you have any questions, please do leave a comment and I will get straight back to you. Please like and subscribe and I'll talk to you in the next video.